In this video we're going to talk about efficiency and simple machines. Efficiency is pretty important when it comes to machines. The better the machine, the more efficient it's going to be. And so a machine that's not very efficient isn't a very useful machine. So what are we going to learn in this video? First we'll learn different types of machines. Then we'll learn about the equation to calculate efficiency. Finally, we'll solve a couple problems to see how this equation works. When I think of a machine, I'm quick to think about a very complex machine that can carry out very challenging tasks, like a bulldozer that can push earth around like I would never be able to do with my hands and feet. But machines don't have to be complex. A machine is simply a device that can change force or increase the amount of motion from force. To keep things simple, we're going to discuss simple machines. There are six of them, and these are all machines that are going to do, uh, are going to work on an object in just one movement of the machine. The simple machines are the lever, the pulley, the screw, the wheel and axle, the wedge, and the inclined plane. We could also combine a bunch of these together to make compound machines like the bulldozer and do even greater tasks. But again, we're going to keep things simple in this video. We're going to focus on the inclined plane as we discuss efficiency. Now we're going to keep our discussion pretty introductory and you can check out a more complex discussion in another video. Efficiency is a comparison of the work that a machine is able to do on an object compared to the amount of work that we use to operate the machine. We call the work that the machine does the output work and the work that we use to operate the machine is called the input work. So an inclined plane makes moving an object to an increased height easier because you have to do less force on the object to get it to that higher position. So what does this look like? Well, let's look at a situation here where we want to move an object up on top of this bookshelf. Now let's say that the height of this bookshelf is 2 meters and we want to lift our object up and put it on top of the bookshelf lifted all the way up by two meters. Now suppose to do this it required 24 newtons of force in order to lift the object up there. That means the work required was 48 joules. We were able to calculate that using our work equation here which is work equals force times distance and so we take the force again if it took 24 newtons to lift this book and we raised it up by two meters, when we multiply those together, we end up with 48 joules of work. Now let's say that you were not strong enough to apply 24 newtons. No matter what you could do, you could not apply that force, and so you couldn't lift that book. This is where our machine comes in. So now we bring in our inclined plane, and we can push the book along the inclined plane and get it all the way up here to the top of the bookshelf. Now, let's say instead of 24 newtons of force, you only needed to apply 6 newtons of force in order to get that object moving. And you're strong enough to do this, so you can push the object all the way up on top of the shelf. Notice, however, that you had to move a further distance to go all the way up and put it on that shelf. Instead of 2 meters, let's say that the length of this um, inclined plane was actually 10 meters. And so that means you had to apply your 6 newtons of force over 10 meters, which means the work is going to be different. And so because you applied 6 newtons of force for a distance of 10 meters, multiply those together and you end up with 60 joules of work. Now we can compare these two together and we can calculate the efficiency. Now the output work is the work that the machine uh, was able to do. And when we determine this, we just look at the before situation and the after situation. That's what we calculated right here. The book started here on the ground. That was where it was before. It doesn't really matter the path that it took. We just look at where did it end up. So if it started here and it ended up here, we've already calculated the work for uh, the machine's output. So this is the output work. Now the input work is what we did, and so that's what we calculated down here. Let's go ahead and plug those into our equation. And so we have our output work divided by our input work, which is 48 divided by 60, and when we do that calculation, we end up with 0 0.8. Now if we multiply that by 100, 
we'll turn that into a percentage. And so this inclined plane is 80% efficient. Let's look at a couple of other problems so you can have a little more practice. Here's a question that asks us to determine the efficiency of a machine that does 900 joules of work when the input force is 2,000. And so this number right here, that 900 joules, would be the output work. And so we can write down our equation and then plug in these numbers. And so here's our equation, output over input, and we can plug in 900 joules and divide that by 2,000 joules, and we end up with an efficiency of 0 0.45. Again, we're going to multiply that by 100 because it's better to report our answers in terms of a percent than a decimal. And so this machine is 45% efficient. Let's look at one more. In this problem, uh, we have a pulley system that's 64% efficient. And uh, we want to calculate the output work if we apply 85 joules of input. So once again, let's start with our equation. In this case, we're going to be solving for the output work. And we're given the efficiency, and it's 64% efficient. When I write this into the equation, remember that's going to go here where that E is. I'm going to write it as the decimal form, just like we would get when we do the calculation. So it's 0.64. To convert a percent into a decimal, just divide that by 100. And I'm going to calculate the output force, and I know the input force. That's 85 joules. So if I divide both, or if I multiply both sides of the equation by 85, I'll be able to determine the output force. And so I'd have 0 0.64 times 85 joules and I would end up with an output force, or the force that the machine would be able to do, of 54.4 joules. And that is efficiency in simple machines. So we learned about the six different kinds of simple machines. We learned the equation to calculate efficiency, and we learned how to solve problems involving that equation. Support the Science Classroom by subscribing to my channel and liking this video. You could also become a patron on Patreon by clicking on the link. Thanks for watching.